A Fitness Today presents the AFT International Sports and Fitness Festival at Port Panthers, November 4th and 5th. There are health talks, youth activities, a bazaar, a walk for good, and lots more. Entry is free. For more details, go to sportsfitnessfestival.com. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we're here at uh, Port Macquarie in Panthers, and standing right next to me is Matt Levy, an amazing man who has achieved so many laps of um, gold medals, uh, you know, a champion who never gives up. But believe it or not, he's now a retired swimmer. How can somebody be retired at such a young age? So I'm going to pass the mic over to you, Matt. Um, well, thanks guys for having me today. Um, first of all, I just like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, uh, and, uh, that we are on today, uh, and paying our respects to the elders past, present and emerging. Uh, it's really great to obviously be part of this, uh, festival, um, this sports festival of inclusion. Uh, obviously here today we're in Port Macquarie. Uh, but uh, it's looking at going around the globe uh, in uh, Melbourne and uh, uh, KL as well. Um, but yeah, it's really great to be here today to be able to talk to you a little bit about my experience and um, yeah, my journey in my my sporting career. Um, and yeah, it was it, for me. Uh, I started off in swimming way back in. 1999. Uh, I learned to swim as part of therapy for my disability. Uh, so for me, uh, I was born at 25 weeks. I have uh, cerebral palsy as a result of a bleed on the brain in the first three days of life. I acquired uh, vision impairment uh, due to lack of oxygen in the first um, couple of weeks as well. And for me, life hasn't been easy. Uh, I, well, I was going to say I kind of can see the first row, but we don't have a lot of people in the first row, but, uh, I'm sure, yeah, for me, I think, yeah, life hasn't been easy. Um, things like, uh, unscrewing bottle lids, putting toothpaste on toothbrushes, uh, isn't easy. Uh, and, uh, walking upstairs and walking downstairs from a, um, vision and, a neurological perspective isn't easy, but um, I guess today I'll be talking to you a bit about, I guess, my journey and my experience throughout my life and uh, a little bit about, I guess, what I call my success framework. So for me, it, it's uh, not just about the experience. It's not just about the achievements. It's about the whole journey of life. And uh yeah, I think for me, it's always been about knowing where you want to go and how you want to get there. And uh, as someone with a disability, uh, I really enjoy having and experiencing things for what they are. And um, I remember back in 2000, watching the Paralympic Games for one of the first times and seeing people with far worse disabilities uh, than myself and wanting to join them at some point. And that's, I guess, where I got the bug of wanting to do something more than just swimming laps of a swimming pool. And uh, that was when uh, I really kind of got that urge to want to do something more. And I look back and remember my first swimming carnival out at Olympic Park in Sydney. And that particular day, I remember doing one of my first swimming races, uh, barely making 50 meters at the particular time but I remember clearly that I, I went off and went and played with my friends on the play equipments and and all that fun stuff that you do as a 11 12 year old and I remember thinking that I knew, should know when there was a going home time and a time that I should go back to school and I somehow missed the bus and was left out at Olympic Park uh, by myself as a 11 12 year old and I remember thinking to myself, I could have done one of two choices. I could have caught it into a, caught it into a ball and cried or done something about it. And I chose to do something about it. And back then, 
We didn't have any social media, obviously no Instagram, no Facebook. I uh, had around 20 cents in my pocket, so enough to call my parents and let them know that I was safe. But uh, long story short, it took me around, it was around 70 Ks from where I was uh, at the time where I was living. And it took me around three, four hours to get home. Uh, a lot of wrong turns, a lot of asking questions of strangers and blank looks from the general public. But eventually I walked through that door some three, four hours later, but um, I learned a lot about goals um, and managing targets and being able to achieve something. Uh, we all, I guess, have that moment in our lives where we're a kid getting uh, lost in a shopping mall or lost on the way home from school. And I think that was my aha moment and my moment that I realized that goals and targets aren't just something that you can dream of as a sporting person. Um, they're something that we have er that's in every part of our lives, um, no matter what it is. And for me, uh, I always think back to that moment in time and remember what I did and how I got to, how I got there in the end. And I think um, for me, in those tough times, it was really important to remember uh, that we're always, well, we're all, we're always that little kid um, looking to get home. And for me, um, that was, I guess, kind of my moment. And uh, for me, I always think back when I think of goals and targets and what I kind of did at that particular time and um, goals and moments like that and dreams are always something that are seemingly out of reach sometimes, but sometimes they're just things that happen and things that you have to kind of pivot and adapt, adapt to. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please. Not to forget, uh, Matt, that the, the we, we played at one o'clock. Sure. No worries, just let me know when you've flicked it to the next slide. Uh, it should be um, about tools. Anyway, while she's doing that, um, yeah, uh, as she, as we mentioned, uh, we'll be going live in, uh, going a pre-recording in uh, Kuala Lumpur. And uh, for those that are watching this recording, um, yeah, I'm talking about my experiences and my success framework um, throughout, I guess, my life, um, which can be adapted to anything that you guys do in your own lives. And for me, I had a passion for swimming. I had a belief in what I was doing, but I needed to have tools to get there. I needed to be able to get there somehow and some way. And uh, it was really a moment back in 2008 um, that I realized that um, I needed to do something more and have, I guess, a different mindset. And I, I thought I'd done everything possible. I thought I ticked every box. I thought I'd trained the hardest I could possibly train. But I realized in 2008, uh, Paralympic Games after I'd, after I finished, I, I didn't, I didn't uh, make a final. I didn't do any personal bests. Uh, I didn't do what I set out to do. I didn't even compete in the race that I trained to do and uh, I realized by basically just looking at myself in the mirror and realizing that I didn't approach the activities that I wanted to do with the right mindset with that mindset of wanting to be the best version of myself and wanting to be able to achieve something more and uh, it was through I guess that realization that I understood to really approach activities with the mindset of wanting to do more, wanting to achieve more. And yeah, it was through, I guess, that realization that from that moment, it was really about working on what I could do to improve, uh, whether it was in business or sport. And uh, it was through, I guess, that understanding and that experience that I was able to work on work on what I was doing and work on how I could continually improve and approaching activities with that mindset of wanting to improve and wanting to 
continually move forward and uh, whether it was in the pool, uh, improving my turns, improving my starts, uh, improving my different strokes. It was really about having that mindset of wanting to improve each part of what I'm doing. Uh, and I think that's really important in what we do in life. It's really about uh, improving every little bit that we can to make the most of what we're we're doing in life and it's really about having that mindset and having that understanding of where you want to go and I think for me as an athlete um, that was always important throughout my career uh, not just as a high performing athlete in swimming but also through uh, through business and through through life it's really about approaching activities with that best possible mindset in mind next slide please uh, so I think for me, I've got a passion, I've got goals in mind and I've got, I guess that mindset, but it's all about having the package all together. And it's really about making sure that you're simplifying your goals and simplifying what you do to get there. And for me, it's always been about whether it's going to a Paralympic games or whether it's doing something in my business work, business life, it's really about looking at what goal do I want to achieve and how I want to achieve it, but also making sure it's manageable, making sure it's targeted and making sure it's packaged in a actionable and manageable way. Uh, so for me as an athlete, I, um, Paralympics is every four years, uh, the major sporting events is every four years. So it's really about making sure that I'm breaking it down into smaller bite-sized chunks I'm making sure that I hit every training session and make sure that I make sure that it's hitting the mark every time and whether it's going to comps uh, on a monthly basis uh, every three months every 12 weeks it's really about making sure that everything that I do is geared towards that major goal but making sure that it's simplified it's manageable it's able to be understood to not just myself, but to the people that are listening. And for me, it was really important to break the goals down to make them manageable and targeted. And uh, for me, that really hit home in uh, 2020 uh, when we hit, had COVID. Uh, we have a four-year cycle in the Paralympic Games and it the Paralympics was coming up fast in 2020 and it got postponed. It got uh, moved out one year and it was really about pivoting and altering my thinking and my mindset to really kind of focus on what can I do to improve in the next 365 days because I was going to be one year older uh, and it was really important to manage that expectation and to really understand that uh 300, you have 365 days to improve. You have 84,600 odd seconds in a day to make the most of what you're doing. And for me, that was really important because um, as an athlete, you don't get any younger, you get a bit older. So it was really important to make the most of that. And that's no different in anything that we do in life. It's really about making the most of what you do to make the most of your, your here and now. And um, as someone that lives with a disability, um, every day is a different challenge. Uh, so it's really important to have that mindset and to continue to move forward. Um, for me, it's always important to remember that we always have good and bad days, but it's always important to remember that there's always that positive moment in what we do. And for me, as an athlete um, and as a human being, I always remember that there's always something positive that we can take out of that negative. And for me, during that COVID period, um, I had another 365 days to train. I had another 365 days to improve. Um, and it's no different in anything we do in life. Uh, sometimes we're faced with negatives. Sometimes we're faced with something that doesn't sit well with us or it's not on our radar but it's really important to look at what we can do from a positive perspective to improve whether that's um, improving 
the activity that we're doing, whether that's improving uh, our health, our attitude, our, our fitness, and um, in the spirit of uh, the sporting festival, it's yeah always important to improve what you do and how you do it. And if you can't do it yourself, then um, get out there and have people around you to help and make that happen. Uh, next slide, please. Um, that brings me to uh, creating your inner circle. So for me, as an athlete, uh, I've got my passion. I've got my belief in what I do. I've got the experience through my mindset and the tools. Um, and as I mentioned, I've got those goals and I'm breaking those goals down. But at the end of the day, it's all about having people around you. It's having, I guess, that what I call my inner circle, um, having people that you can lean on, that you can talk to, that you can, that can give you good, bad, indifferent feedback. It's about helping lift you higher than you ever think you could do. It's really important to have people around you that you can trust that can help you on that journey. Because at the end of the day, me as an athlete, I can only do so much. I only know from what I experience. So it's really important as an athlete, uh, as uh, someone that's wanting to be an athlete or wanting to improve their fitness, it's important that you have people around you that you trust, whether it's your friends, whether it's your family, whether it's the person you meet on the bus on the way to your sport or your, your event. It's important to have to have people and have conversations with people to learn different experiences and learn different understandings and different perspectives. Uh, for me, as an athlete, um, and I was able to compete for 20 plus years uh, over five Paralympic Games, I didn't do that because of me and because of me alone. I did it because of my friends. I did it because of my family. I did it because of my parents and people that were on that journey with me and that I learned different perspectives of and I if I didn't have that I would have been going along the same road and thinking along the same path and I think it's really important to have different perspectives and have different conversations and learn from different people whether it's good bad indifferent uh, I think that's really important no matter if you're doing sport um, from a just a fitness perspective um, or you're doing sport um, at a higher level or in business or in anything you do in life, I think it's important to have people that you can trust and people that you have on that journey that can help you and guide you throughout that experience because life's not meant to be easy uh, and life isn't meant to be something that's we do alone so I think it's important to have people around you uh, people in your circle that you can call on that you can have that give feedback that be able to have that communication and be able to help engage what you do and how you do things to make you not just a better individual but uh, a better influencer throughout the world and throughout society Next slide, please. Um, so for me, it's not just important to have people around you. It's also important to engage with those people. And I think me as an athlete, I went to a couple of Paralympic Games and it was really important to gain insights from coaches, from people that have been there before, my parents, my friends. It's, it was very important to understand where... They think I could improve what I've done previously and what I could do better in the future. And I think it was really important to not just have people in your inner circle, but also engage with those people, have conversations, uh, be able to question what you're doing, be able to understand what you can do better and how you can do more with, with what you've got. And I think in life, no matter if it's in sport, in business or in anything else that you do, it's always important to have that mindset of wanting to improve and wanting to 
engage with different people and have different perspectives because um, we don't know what we don't know. And it's always important to have that perspective in life to be able to help you along that road and along that journey. We all have different journeys within our own lives, but we can all learn from people uh, and we can all learn different things from different individuals. And for me as an athlete, uh, I learned a lot from the people that I met along the way. Uh, and it was through, I guess, having those conversations that I learned, oh, I could do something different in my dive. I can do something different in what I do in the pool. Uh, and it's no different in whatever we do in life. It's looking at what do we do now? What do people do around me that I can do to help improve how I'm doing things and be more effective? And I think, yeah, it's really important to not just listen, but engage, not just engage, but um, take action. And not everything that we do needs to have a reaction or be able to be used. But I think it's important to learn from each other and learn how we do things better and what we can do to continually improve. Uh, next slide, please. Um, now this slide is from a sporting perspective. It's really about the strategy. Uh, for me, I was really privileged to have, uh, a passion for the sport that I do. Uh, and no matter what you do in life, passion is what starts it and how we kind of start what we do and how we start, I guess, that process for me. Um, it all boiled down to having that passion and having that belief in what I do and also creating tools and having people around me. But at the end of the day, you need to have a strategy. You need to be able to get there and know how to get there. And, um, this, uh, slide, I think there was a video, but I don't know. But, um, anyway, uh, there in, in this particular slide, um, it depicts strategy and, for me, it really depicts a moment in time when I went to the Commonwealth Games in 2006. Uh, it was the Melbourne Commonwealth Games. Uh, so it was about 16, 17 years ago. I remember doing my swimming races and feeling really confident in what I was doing. And I got to the end of um, the qualifying rounds and I remember missing out on the Commonwealth Games in Melbourne in 2006 by 0 0.3, 0 0.4 of a second. Uh, so for any of you that knows, doesn't know swimming, uh, 0 0.4 of a second is really close. It's about a fingernail, depending how long your fingernails are. Uh, and yeah, I was really devastated at that particular moment. And I thought my time was up to be able to make Commonwealth Games. And I remember leaving that competition devastated and um, having a lot of food for thought in terms of how I could improve. And uh, some 14 years later, uh, the Commonwealth Games was announced in uh, Gold Coast in 2018. And I remember thinking, uh, I have another chance to make the Commonwealth Games. And uh, the I was lucky enough to represent the, um, Australia in the Commonwealth Games and it was the result of hard work, not just hard work, not just determination, not just my attitude, but 14 years of hard work, 14 years of changing my mindset, changing my approach, changing what I needed to do to improve potentially 0.3, but I wasn't even sure how much. And, uh, it was no different in the business world or in anything we do in life, it's really important to continue to evaluate what you're doing, continue to understand how you can improve and how you can be better. And for me, it was a 14 year journey of improving 0.3 of a second. Um, and that was, I guess, not a lot, but it was a lot in terms of touching the wall at a particular moment in time and for me uh at that particular 
Games. I was lucky enough to win gold for Australia at the Commonwealth Games on the Gold Coast in 2018. Um, but it wasn't just one year's worth of work. It wasn't just four years worth of work. It was 14 years of hard work, 14 years of sacrifice, 14 years of changing, I guess, my approach to what I was doing and how I was doing it. And uh, I think whatever we do in life, um, we can always change our approach and change how we do it. But it's always about having that strategy and having that approach to what we're doing to improve how we do things, what we do and our actions that we take. And I think for me, that's what I believe strategy to be. Um, strategy is not just uh, a three, four year, five year plan. It's a plan to work on how we can improve ourselves, how we can improve how we're doing things and how we can approach things in a different way. And for me, at the Commonwealth Games, uh, it was really about approaching things in a different way to what I was thinking in the past. And uh, I didn't know I was whether I would get the result I wanted, but it was really about trying things differently and being able to approach things in a different way. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, no, it's all good. Uh, this is like, this is the last slide and then we can open up to questions. Um, so for me as a athlete and as a human being, um, it's really about staying focused and having, I guess, that mindset of wanting to do something and staying focused on your goal. And for me, um, I firmly believe that we arrive in the world with nothing and we leave with nothing, but we have all these experiences and all these lessons that we learn along the way that can help us as human beings and help us to improve and to move forward. And for me, um, I'll show you this video. Uh, is there a video on this video? Yeah. Or not. It wasn't the first. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. All right. Well, I can send it to you after and we can reshare. That's okay. Uh, it should be, yeah. It might have come up in this version. Or maybe because it's the... That's all right. Um, yeah, so I'm happy to open up to questions um, from the many people in the room. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, but the, that's a long time, so what kept you going? Have you got any shortcuts or secrets to help with that? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, what kept me going was probably like knowing that I had improvement in me and knowing that I could, I, I had further improvement in what I was doing. And I think as an athlete, we work in milliseconds, we work in small amounts of time. So it was really about continually having goals each session, continually working out what I needed to improve on in this session and having small goals within the week or the month or the 12 week cycle to really kind of, um, make it manageable and make it fun and, uh, keep me focused. I think it was the important thing. Um, but I think for me, it was always about remembering why I started, um, thinking back to those, that time when I was lost at Olympic Park and remembering why I started in the first place and that it was for me to improve and health and fitness and that kind of stuff. Um, cause at the end of the day, gold medals come and go, races come and go, but our fitness is for forever. So I think for me, that was the, that's always been the cornerstone of why I've swam and why I've competed, not, and the, like the after, um, the byproduct um, is, I guess, the, the medals and the travel and all that kind of stuff in between. Yeah. Um, so, coming on the way on top, how, so you get retired and like most athletes, you're tiring from sports these days. Yeah. So you don't get 5.30, you're not going to the pool, you don't just, you know, you're separate teams, you don't have all of those things that you've had for the last two or three years of your life. What did you find most difficult about the tire 
um, from competitions and training you know, in that powerful way. Why? And what did you? Use? What were the strategies that you used to you know take a lot of that? That's like a calm and funk. And um, go, oh, do you think I'm going to do it well? I heard it. Yeah, I think I learned very early on um, that uh, I wanted, didn't want like to be that known as that athlete. Uh, and I started work probably in oh, part time in 2008. Um, so, very beginning in my career. Uh, so, I made a conscious decision to learn skills outside of sport and outside of the elite side of things. Uh, early on um, to really kind of ease that transition because yeah it's difficult if you're competing for 10 15 years you're just solely most of them are just solely doing their sport so it's very difficult to go into the real world and earn money and um, have a mortgage and all that kind of stuff so I think for me it was important to learn that early uh, be it I was working part-time so it was a little bit less of a burden but um I was able to gain those skills then to be able to use them now and I think that was really important to help me get over that athlete transition funk um because um yeah it's very real and it's very something that every athlete kind of grapples with and uh tends to not be able to balance um so I think it's really important whether it's having an internship or are doing volunteer work uh, in your field of passion, um, whatever it is, um, doing something that's going to help you on that road, whether you retire tomorrow, whether you retire in five years, to really kind of help um, that cycle and break that cycle because um, a lot of athletes do stop whenever that is and then they don't have much. Uh, well, they, they have a lot of athlete stuff, but that's about it. <laughs> The stories about Etsy are very inspiring. It's always a mindset story. And I read Ash Barker's yeah. autobiography, and she had the courage mantra. Now that you retire, do you mind sharing the one? Didn't really have a mantra per se, but I think. Uh... When you're in a big league. I think for me and most athletes, everything's kind of done in training. Um, no different in anything we do in life. I think you don't deliver a project. You don't deliver uh, uh, a media communication or anything before you deliver it. You, um, I guess, go through the process of actioning certain activities. You uh, you do um, pre-work. You do um, sourcing with other people. You do communication with uh, other people. And the same thing in sport. We, we do training two hours in the morning two hours at night um we consult with our coaches we do all that um so we do a lot of stuff prior to the event that might take two minutes or less uh so in the event it's important to have a clear mind to really kind of enjoy the experience enjoy the moment enjoy what you're doing um because at the end of the day that moment's not going to come again you're not going to i'm not going to be in this room in four years time at this particular moment um, so it's important to have that mindset of taking the, making the most of the opportunity that you have and enjoying, I guess, that experience, enjoying that moment. And I think it's important to not get caught up in the nerves and the stress and try and nullify that a little bit and just enjoy the experience of racing, enjoy the experience of only competing for two minutes and not having to train for two hours or four hours in a given day. So it's similar kind of approach to releasing a project or releasing a media release or whatever it is um, you do. Uh, it's not done then and there. It's done well before. So it's same kind of concept. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah. Well, you try and do it as, like, yeah, there's nerves and there's a bit of stress and second guessing and all that stuff. But uh, I think... Yeah, it's definitely important to enjoy the moments and enjoy the experience. And I think for me that hit home in 2004 because I was, that was my first Paralympic Games and I did enjoy the moment. I did love the experience, but uh, I probably didn't take it in as much. 
and uh, yeah, it's really important to kind of take everything in because you don't know when it's going to be your last games. You don't know when it's going to be your last whatever. Um, so it's important to, I guess, enjoy the experience for what it is. Yes. Um, what about you? Could we get a hot pillies? If I'm not, if no, no, if I need to put myself on my. Yeah. You know, right? Oh, can we speak? Can we speak? Can we speak? Um, you now got your own scholarship program. Yeah. At when? What's the one you think that Jerry will see in the room right now? What's the one thing you can tell that? What's the one one thing, one piece of golden information you say? I think consistency, I think is key. Uh, as an athlete, yeah, we have bad sessions, we have good sessions, but I think the more good session, the more consistent sessions you have, the more times you turn up, the more times that you uh, are doing consistent work and no different in anything else we do it's being consistent it's turning up it's being able to have that consistent approach to what you're doing builds confidence it builds resilience it builds courage it builds all those i guess skills uh soft skills to allow you to succeed in life and i don't mean like potentially winning a gold medal or that kind of stuff it's more about when you have not so great times you'll be you'll be able to get through it whereas a lot of kids these days they don't have consistency they might do something for five minutes and go on to the next thing or do something for a month and then go on to the next thing so I think consistency is key and it certainly builds resilience and courage and attitude and all that stuff I think is probably the the building blocks of all that I've got time for two more questions. Do you guys that just turned up have any questions? Yeah. How important do you think your family was for uh, framing your what want to for your desire to progress when you were very young? Or support that work with you? Yeah, I think they're they're obviously really important. Um for my support network, uh, they dropped me to training. They picked me up at late nights. They, um, well, they still get up early now, but, uh, they, um, got up early and dropped me to training and, um, had my food ready and all that stuff. Uh, so they were really important in framing that, those values and beliefs. And I always remember back to one of my first days at school, uh, I started at this particular school in year five and finished in in year 12. And I remember the day before I, well, before I started uh, year five at this particular school, it was about 10 to 15 Ks from my house. And um, me and my dad, we always, for about six, seven months before I started school, uh, we would get the bus every Sunday to school, work out the route and work out where I need to walk from A to B, uh, how I need to get to uh, the train station, how I need to get to the entrance to the school, um, all that kind of stuff. So I think that sticks in my mind because it taught me not just uh, perseverance, but also the ability of planning, the ability of... uh, kindness and uh being able to show what you're capable of and I think that was really sticks in my mind because um it shows me a lot of different things around having that right attitude and having that right mindset and um yeah it was important for me to I guess from a vision impaired perspective to kind of understand where to go and how to get there but um yeah it was a lot in dedication and perseverance to go seven months and show me where to go and all that kind of stuff. So I think that was really 
important and that stuck in my mind from my parents' perspective and um, uh, values and beliefs perspective as well. Um, yeah, and this I think this is being recorded, so for the two people that didn't make the talk, um, you can always listen to it. Uh, what is it, one o'clock our time or midday our time? Two. It's at BRT. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jasmine can let you know the the link, but um, yeah. Thanks for attending today, and it's yeah been really great to be able to chat to you guys. And um, there's a few books here as well um, for people that have already got one. It's already signed. That one's good. Thank you. Thank you. The reason to do a book was really, I do talks like this, which is good, but people don't have anything to take home with them. And um, it's always good to have things to hold on to and something tangible. So um, that was, I guess, the real reason to write a book. And um, I think at the end of the day, People don't take everything from a talk. Um, they take one or two things or sometimes none. So I think it's important to have something can be used to help. Yeah, to have you influenced. Important to start young, I think, because uh, we only live once. And I think it's always important to uh, learn things when you're young to help you in your adult life and I think fitness and sport in general is really important and that's why I guess the sports festival that uh, is going on here today and also virtually as well in uh, Kuala Lumpur, it's important to have fitness and well-being um, both in the physical and the, the mental. So I think it's, yeah, it's really important to um, learn young to be able to help us in our adult life and we don't know what we don't know uh and it's also yeah it's that's why it's important to be able to experience things for what they are